Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you doing today? How's, how's things? Um, things? Things are here. And um, I spent the last, I don't know, hour in here. I came down here to really just push myself to work on this project that I wanted to work on that I showed you yesterday that, that needs welded. And um, started really thinking about how I'm going to go about filming that project because I don't want it to just be like camera on a tripod and, and all that. Um, and I went back to a while ago, long ago, before I had any, before I even owned a tripod, I had this thing that I made. Uh, and this thing's pretty cool. It's like a little camera rig that um, I mount the camera here and it has a base plate on it here and it allows me to set the camera up. I used this for quite a while to do all kinds of videos because uh, I could easily just set it anywhere and film and but it didn't have an adjustable ball head or anything like that and um, some of the early videos specifically like when I did the watch repair video was done at this bench by just I made this shelf that slips into some screws under there and then this thing would sit upside down like this with the camera on it and it worked. It works pretty well, actually. Uh, you know, I, I got stuff done that way. At least videos were made. Um, yeah, and that was before this camera. Now, I, I have used this camera in that upside down configuration to do quite a few videos, actually. A lot of the soldering videos and stuff that I've done, or electronics videos, have been on this camera in that rig stuck up in there. But. It's kind of this big cumbersome thing, and because of the way it's set up, uh, I have to take it down if I want to use these doors. And I didn't like that. So then I thought, well, I'll make a rig, uh, a, a newer rig. I have base plates now. I ordered a bunch of these base plates to go with the camera, uh, the camera shoes, the camera mounts. These are just like some quick disconnect base plates that you can... So I have base plates now. And so I thought, I'll just make a much simpler version that can stay up there. This thing could actually just live there full time. It might. I don't know. And then I got the GoPro out because once I did this, the camera on here versus on here is like six inches closer to the bench, which really shrinks down the viewable area to like maybe a foot wide, which is typically fine. But I'd like to have more bench viewable. So I thought, well, I'll use the GoPro. And anyway, this just turned into like a whole event of me putting this thing together when I intended on working on this. But I guess I guess doing this is any anything that helps facilitate the creation of more content um, is ultimately good, right? Like it's ultimately progress towards a goal, even though it's like really truthfully a baby step. Like this is a extremely simple little thing that I made, watched like a documentary while I was making it and um, started really thinking about how, how this is going to play out because I'm really interested in doing more content like this, uh, not this, but the video, the building stuff. And I know that you, many of you have wanted me to do more building videos for quite some time. And so I'm really excited about getting back into that. I just, like I said, I have to figure out how to film down here without it getting in my way. <laughs> when things get in my way, then I tend to just kind of shove it to the side and move on. And a lot of my videos, will you'll see that like, I'll get to a point where I'm frustrated and then I set the camera aside and I work. And then when I turn the camera on, like, this huge leap in, in time or in progress has happened because I just got frustrated. I turned the camera off and I continued to work and got absorbed in whatever it was I was doing and forgot that I was supposed to be trying to show the process, you know, even something like this. I mean, ultimately this, I used the bandsaw on this, used the drill press a couple of times. I had to use the bench sander and do some recesses. And I mean, I could have, this actually could have been like a little video uh, where I talk about why I'm doing this this way. Um, and it could have been interesting, but I just didn't film it. 
Yeah, I mean, it, honestly, nobody would watch it, but I, it could have been an uh, exercise. And I think that's the thing. Like, I think I need to stuff like this. I do stuff like this down here on an extremely regular basis. Multiple times a week, I come down here and make just some little thing. It's nothing. And I think much like woodworking, I should probably use these opportunities to practice the craft of making a video out of this. Even if I never show it, just turn the camera on and kind of force myself through the motions of working with this. Instead of, instead of viewing this as getting in my way, how do I use this as a new tool? How do I use this as part of the process? Um, Man, and I think that's ultimately what I just need to do. You know, oftentimes woodworkers will say that if you're building something for your shop, practice a technique you don't know yet or, or learn, you know, use that opportunity to, to, to learn something new or to practice a technique that you're rusty at or something like that because that's the perfect time. You're, you don't care what it actually ends up like. But if you pull something off that's nice, then you have this nice piece of shop furniture. You know you can perform that skill like box joints or, you know, um, mortise and tenon or dovetails or whatever it might be, you know, in that same vein, I should probably film everything, even if I never use it. So that was kind of the, the, the gist when I wanted, when I asked for GoPros, um, I got this one from one of you and, uh, I would think I, I think I need another one. I think I need to find another GoPro, preferably one of the tiny little sessions that I can kind of glue places or whatever. Um, so that I can have two of these running at all times. And I think that would much, I think that would increase the chances that I pull off <laughs> future videos. So that's where we're at. Good talk. Maybe. Probably not. Today rain. It sucked. It was 70 degrees and it was pouring the rain down like flood raining here in West Virginia. I want to ride my motorcycle so freaking bad. I, I, I almost took it to work, but it was really bad. So, hell yeah. It is what it is. Thank you for being here as always. Thank you for watching and liking and commenting and being friends, and I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, Doc, wait. I want to ask you something. Today's random fact comes from Mental Floss. What do the Olympic rings stand for? Kuberton explained his design in 1931. A white background with five interlaced rings in the center, blue, yellow, black, green, and red is symbolic. It represents the five inhabited continents of the world, united by Olympiism, while the six colors are those that appear on all the national flags of the world.